Sponsored by RingCon. You know the old saying, maybe the real CES is the friends we made along the way. I told you at the end of last year that 2024 will not see me casting as wide a net to cover every electronic bauble that crosses my radar. Because whether you're talking tech videos or life itself, I think it's wise to save your awe, your wonder, even your skepticism for stuff that truly gets your attention one way or the other. That, plus the fact that I was also on the other side this year, hawking a product I helped develop, means my pick list from the world's biggest tech show is shorter this time around. Nevertheless, it was indeed a good year at CES 2024, and from dual screen laptops, to AI handhelds, to possibly even a recreational vehicle. I've rounded up all the products that got my blood pumping. Literally. Yes, literally, because I was able to measure in real time how much pulse pounding a particular product prompted thanks to a heart rate and blood oxygen sensing wearable from my sponsor, RingCon. But we'll see which one won the heart race at the end. Let's start with the gadget that actually made AI seem relatively cool, at least for a second, the R1 from Rabbit. Now, this is not a phone. And contrary to some headlines you may have read, it's not meant to replace your phone either. That's straight from the mouth of Rabbit CEO Jesse Liu, who envisions a world in which you don't jump into and out of a bunch of apps to get things done. Instead, you ask the R1 to use your apps for you. Props to The Verge for distilling that concept into a great headline. So what's that look like? Well, let's say you want to order a car or a pizza with the R1. You hold down the push to talk button on the side and tell the device what you want, and then it uses its built-in 4G connection or Wi-Fi to connect to the cloud backend called the rabbit hole, where it interfaces with the Uber or DoorDash account you set up after first unboxing it so it can create the order on your behalf. You can also ask the R1 questions of the sort that we've seen large language models like ChatGPT field for a while now, but with a claimed resistance to the kind of hallucinations that large language models have become known for. Now, if using an app doesn't sound like the world's most exhausting task, I completely agree. But the interesting part about Rabbit is its large action model, that's LAM instead of LLM, which can learn new tasks to execute for you over time. And teaching it is as simple as showing it a screen recording of you performing that task in whatever app you're sick of using. The breadth of possibility there is what's interesting to me. I have visions of coming back to my hotel room after a day of filming at CES, pushing the R1's button and saying, cancel my briefings tomorrow morning, book me an earlier flight home, and send a quick apology email to everyone affected. That would save me a lot of time, especially when you consider I might not be invited back to CES next year. But in all honesty, I think the main reasons we geeks flocked to this thing have less to do with Rabbit's potential than with the... I'll call it the vibe. The only other AI hardware that's really made a splash so far is Humane's AI pin, a device whose ambition to replace the smartphone is directly at odds with its cost, its lack of a screen, and a vaguely off-putting launch video. Make me sound more excited. That most memorably demonstrated the pin's tendency to get basic questions wrong. In the wake of that, here comes the R1 playfully designed by Teenage Engineering, with a screen to go with its camera so you can see what you're doing, and a price tag of $1.99 with no subscription fee. It even has a cute name and digital mascot. Now, I have no idea how Rabbit makes money in the future with that kind of pricing, and I don't see why most of its features couldn't eventually come to a smartphone. But there is value in making AI seem less threatening, more useful, and frankly, more fun. I'm looking forward to reviewing it later this year, ahead of its planned March release. Speaking of things I'd like to review, the latest bit of tech to bear the brand Pebble. Yeah, there was no Candela flying boat on display at CES this year, so I had to sate my desire for true mobility with the Pebble Flow, a recreational vehicle designed for all-electric, get-up-and-go freedom. Coin flip. Meet innovation. Money. 
The Pebble Flow got a lot of buzz ahead of the show because it's being marketed as the iPhone of RVs, which is a little weird because with features like a dual motor drivetrain, self-parking and being able to hitch itself to your truck, I feel like a better pitch would be the Tesla of RVs. But maybe the fact that Pebble's CEO is a veteran of nearly a decade at Apple has something to do with it. Anyway, as someone who's never RV'd before, I'm definitely intrigued by the remote control and Instacamp features. But seeing it in person, I was most captivated by the smart use of space. Their sleeping capacity for four people with a built-in Murphy bed, a chef's kitchen, and a full-size shower in the bathroom, separated from the main living area by electrochromic glass, whose opacity can change at the touch of a button. This feels genuinely larger inside than it looks like. This, this is impressive. Even when you sit down wearing a backpack like an idiot. Pebble Flow is plug and play compatible with Starlink, comes with a 45 kilowatt hour LFP battery pack, requires towing capacity of 6,200 pounds, and starts at $109,000. I don't own a car, but this is the first RV I've ever been genuinely excited by. So let me know in the comments if I should try and road trip with this one and make it the Mr. Mobile Mobility Mobile Headquarters when shipments start at the end of the year. The Pebble, at the heart of American innovation and today at the cutting edge of design and function in a Class C motor home. You believe any of that Next, let's look at a laptop. It wouldn't be CES without Asus pushing the envelope of what's possible in this form factor. And this year, the company has taken its ZenBook Duo line to the next logical step, expanding the second screen to cover the entirety of the laptop's lower half and adding a removable keyboard to keep things clicky. Yeah, I can hear you saying it. Lenovo did beat Asus to the punch with last year's YogaBook 9i, a laptop I truly love. But that machine made you carry the keyboard separately, it made you use the screen as a trackpad, unless you brought a separate mouse, and it limited you to just three Thunderbolt ports. The ZenBook Duo has enough space between its 14-inch touchscreens to let you leave the keyboard right in there, where it connects and charges with a hard pogo pin connection to prevent Bluetooth wonkiness. There's a true trackpad included in that keyboard as well. Asus also threw in a Type-A USB port, an HDMI connector, and an aux jack to go with its dual Thunderbolt ports. And rather than Lenovo's origami laptop stand, the ZenBook has an integrated kickstand that props it at angles from 40 to 70 degrees. As someone who might never review a conventional laptop again, it's great to see ambitious form factors getting common enough that multiple manufacturers are competing for the dual screen user. And to be clear, Asus hasn't totally walked away with the game. The ZenBook Duo is substantially chunkier than Lenovo's YogaBook 9i, and the same hinge design that makes it possible to fit the keyboard in there also puts the screens awkwardly a kilter if you go side by side with them. Still, I think it's really impressive what Asus has managed to do to advance the notebook PC conversation with this product, and that's why I gave it Mr. Mobile's Best in Show Award. The ZenBook Duo starts at $14.99 and should be available later in the first quarter. CES 2024 was littered with the usual suspects I look forward to seeing year after year. And not just my friends, but my brands. Yeah, I got to go hands-on with Garmin's new Mark Carbon Edition watches, which are classy looking but much too lightweight for my taste, owing to the carbon fiber construction. I saw the John Deere self-driving tractors. I've driven one of these. You're way more fun on a real field. But this is a field of carpet. It's a field of lies. I went hands-on with TCL's next paper again, and there were new delights. We all got Aronofsky'd at the Sphere, courtesy of Samsung. I was improbably entertained watching Aper's pool cleaning robots doing their thing. But none of that got my heart racing quite as quickly as launching a product I'd helped bring into being. Yeah, I'm not gonna tell you all about clicks again because there's already a whole video up on the channel featuring this full QWERTY keyboard for the iPhone. What got me so keyed up was the experience of showing it, of being on the other side of the table as hordes of press, familiar and not, and friendly and not, descended with demo requests. 
and of doing those same demos with my team in our suite for hours on end, trying to maintain the same level of enthusiasm despite those hours and competing schedules and no shows and occasional wonky prototypes and the business meetings and dinners that followed it all. And while it was exhausting, it was also so rewarding because after 12 years, even stresses and challenges are welcome when they're new and you have a great team around you helping to manage them. And that takes me to the device that helped me quantify those stresses and thrills from the sponsor that made my CES possible. RingCon is a smart ring that tracks your health right from your fingertip. That makes it a great fit for a show like this, where I can be proud of my daily step counts and uh, greatly dismayed by my stress and sleep scores. All this data is coming from RingCon itself, which looks like your standard PVD-coated titanium ring on the outside, but its interior is studded with sensors, which it uses to keep tabs on those step counts, your skin temperature, heart rate, and blood oxygen values, and then distills that information down to an easy to read infographic in the companion app on your phone. And what does that data say about yours truly? Well, according to RingCon, my excitement level was never higher than when I was in that marathon demo day, showing off clicks at the showstoppers show within a show for four hours straight. <laughs> Go figure. Oh, and I should mention that while I brought RingCon's portable charger with me to Vegas, I haven't needed to use it. Starting at 100% last Saturday, after six days of usage, I've still got enough left in the battery for another day. It's a full week-long ring. I know this is sponsored content and all, but still, that's pretty amazing when you consider this thing weighs only three to five grams. RingCon is on sale now at the link in the description. It comes in three colors and there's no subscription fee. Thanks to RingCon for sponsoring Mr. Mobile at CES 2024. Each year I arrive at CES with a zeal for new tech in the company of old friends. And each year I leave drained by the desert air, the cigarette smoke, the omnipresent money pits, and the crass attitude of a diabolical Disneyland built to celebrate the aspects of humanity I find increasingly tiresome. But this year I'm leaving Vegas with a new sense of purpose to go with the new gadgets I saw, and a new resolve to cover only the things I find worth mentioning. If you'd like to weigh in on which of those make it to the channel in the coming months, please let me know in the comments. This video was made possible by a sponsorship from RingCon and the partnership of Clix Technology, of which Mr. Mobile is a co-founder. None of the companies I cover organically in this video enjoyed any editorial input or copy approval rights, and the lone review sample featured came from Asus. Please subscribe to the Mr. Mobile on YouTube and follow me at the same handle on Instagram so you don't miss a high profile smartphone launch coming very soon. Till next time, from Michael Fisher, Captain Two Phones on Threads, thanks for watching. And stay mobile, my friends.